As we approach the end of the year, and thank God 2020 is almost done, it's always fun to look back at what was predicted to happen. If you were like me, you were planning on getting fit at the gym, having countless weekends with your buddies at the local pub, and going to new countries. Because nothing would come around to stop you from going to the bar, going to the gym, or going to the airport, right? <laughs> Needless to say, all of us were wrong with how we thought 2020 was going to turn out. But it's always fun to look at historical predictions, movies, and the like for how they thought the future would be. For this video, we are going to look at what video games thought 2020 was going to look like, as well as a few other games that totally nailed the future. And by nailed the future, I mean they were way off. Before we dive into what games thought 2020 would be, let's get into some games that predicted how some of the years past were going to look like. My favorite game series of all time is Mega Man, and they had an exciting view of two the, two, 200X. I don't know if that's supposed to be 2005, 09, or just... As a little refresher for those who have never played Mega Man for some reason, humans can be turned into fighting robots, which, if you have ever watched UFC or pro wrestling, kind of happens now. Robots are trying to take over the world, and unless you have a doctorate, your name ends in man. I mean, there's Bubble Man, Metal Man, Snake Man, Gemini Man, which turned out to be Will Smith, so good job Capcom with predicting that one. Ring Man, Dust Man, Joanna Man, Blank Man, Really Really Big Man, Repair Man. All jokes aside, Mega Man did get one thing right. With the Empire State Observation Deck in New York City, you could technically pan up to yourself looking over a huge city with your hair in the wind. But yeah, there's no battle in robots. Well, human robot battles anyway. There were plenty of games based in 1999, and Pulseman had a weird story about how 99 was going to turn out. Then again, who didn't have a weird story about the last year of the millennium? In Pulseman, a scientist falls in love with the woman he created with his computer. Sounds a lot like the movie Weird Science, which was done 14 years prior, but this is where it gets weird... -er. The AI woman and the scientist end up having a baby, and since the baby was half man, half... AI, he was able to travel in and out of cyberspace and manipulate electricity. Kinda like an electrician with a smartphone today. They named him Pulse Man because he wasn't a doctor and they were going by Mega Man rules. And he now has the task of stopping an evil villain who was creating cyber crimes way worse than identity theft. <laughs> now this game was a really good game, but a lot of Americans didn't get a chance to play it because it only came out on the Sega channel in 1994. If you can, get a ROM of it, or a repo cart. Come to think of it, if you think about how crazy cyber crimes have become, and how everyone does internet dating, this game really wasn't that far off. But I do think his dad lucked out that there wasn't a swipe left feature yet. I mean, could you imagine being rejected by a woman made up entirely of AI? Hey Alexa, you want to be my girlfriend? I like you, as a friend. And of course, you have 1990's Zombie Nation. I mean, they really nailed it with how 1999 was going to go. Think about it, back in 1999, everyone was singing that famous Prince song, people were worried about how computers would handle Y2K with the dates going back to 00, and then there was that severed samurai head from Japan that came in and saved the United States from an alien meteor that was turning all Americans into zombies and made the Statue of Liberty a weapon. <laughs> Wait, you, you, you don't remember that? Seriously, this game plot sounds like a terrible horror flick. And oddly enough, the game has become a bit of a cult classic. It's considered by many to be an undiscovered gem and is one of the best shoot 'em ups on the old NES. So, if you like shoot 'em ups and you like killing things with bad breath, hmm, this game's for you. But the real fun is when you get to how the gaming world would predict 2020.
let's start with how sports would look, shall we? Apparently, baseball would be played with robots. Everybody would be wearing heavy armor as if they're Barry Bonds. And teams win or lose money on every single play. Why would teams need money? Well, to buy power-ups, of course. You could do armor power-ups, regular power power-ups, you name it, you could power up the player or the team to do it. This is still an enjoyable game, and it's better on Neo Geo than Sega, but to be fair, every game that came out in the 90s was better on Neo Geo than any of the other home console ports. However, you can't go wrong with either. The game is still amazingly enjoyable, and they did get one thing right. The crowd wasn't going to be able to interact with anyone in 2020. No hidden home runs off dogs, though. One of the most beloved games in the 90s was Turtles in Time, and it was one of my favorites too. If you recall, they actually had a bonus level where they traveled to 2020. They did predict hoverboards, although our hoverboards don't look as cool as the ones that they have in the game. <laughs> but if they could make me a hovering manhole that would follow me around when I try to drop pick someone, I definitely would buy it, and I know you would too. They also predicted that the streets wouldn't have potholes anymore, which is something I wish 2020 delivered on. The idea of war in 2020 was very popular throughout video games. Battlefield 4, Call of Duty Strike Team, and Tom Clancy's End War all had the US going to war in 2020. I personally like End War better than the other two, but all three games are still worth a play today. But not all 2020 games were good ones. I present to you Beast Wrestler for the Sega Genesis, or Mega Drive for our people across the pond. You train a beast, and they wrestle. Pretty simple. The game had awful controls. It was very repetitive, much like other wrestling games, but because you weren't playing as someone that you saw on TV, it really made it very unfun. Now, if they made it more like Street Fighter, it would have been way more enjoyable. But then again, they made it more like Street Fighter, it would have probably looked like it ripped off a of Primal Rage. It would be cool if we were at the point where we could train dragons, which we can't, regardless of what Game of Thrones would have you believe. One of the best games based in 2020 would have to be Crisis, which came out on the PC, PS3, and Xbox 360. They even made a remaster earlier this year that you can get on the PS4 and Xbox Live. Basically, the story goes like this. An ancient alien-like structure is found off the Philippines, which has some mighty skills that can shift the power structure of the world. In this game, you have to battle North Korea as well as aliens. But there is one interesting fact that I found looking at Crisis. The nanosuit technology that they talk about in the game is actually inspired by a real-life military concept called Future Force Warrior. Seriously, look it up. Play this game. It's about 15 hours of gameplay, and they made three of them for a reason. Now, a game that isn't worth playing today, unless you want to know what us 90s kids had to deal with, is PS1's Time Commando. The concept of the game is really excellent. The government has time travel capabilities and uses it to train people in real time the fighting styles of the past, the present, and the future. So it's a little bit matrixy, but they couldn't just do the plug and play thing like Neo was able to do. Someone infects the master system that makes it go haywire, and it creates a cyber vortex that will destroy anything in its path. Unless the person is properly equipped. Our hero needs to travel through time, much like how the turtles did, and battle his way to the source of the virus to save the world. The part of the game that's based in 2020 had our hero shooting robots and being attacked by bootleg looking Harley Quinn villains for some reason. Which, unless if people really hated you on Halloween, wasn't going to happen. I'm sure there's some people that still like this game, and if they took the concept and made an entirely new game out of it, it could be really decent. But, um, unless if you just want to see what we had to suffer through in the mid-90s, I wouldn't pick this one up. So how does gaming think the future will be for us? Well, let's start with next year, 2021. If you go by Mindscape's 1991 game, Degeneration, No, not you guys. You'll be in plenty of games, you're not in this one. Anywho, next year we'll be able to deliver mail by Rocket Pack. Wouldn't that be decent? See FedEx or UPS being able to deliver mail while on a rocket jetpack and still mess up your mail, but that's here nor there. 
By the way, this game was made for the Apple II and then later on Amiga, and a remake was made for Nintendo Switch, and yet I had never even heard of it. PC Gamer actually ranked it the 32nd best PC game of all time, and after playing it for about 10 to 15 minutes, I found it to be a really enjoyable puzzle action game. So I definitely need to go back and check this one out. Although the Switch version seems to look really weird and use that Resident Evil font for some reason, so I'm just going to go back and find a Amiga ROM for it. Then you have Sega Saturn Scorcher, which shows us futuristic racing inside of a hamster ball. Then again, for all you American Gladiator fans, this could have seemed like it would be a reality in the near future if you were a fan of that show. It's one of those games that if you really take the time to learn the controls, it's a lot of fun. It is a little hard to get into if you're like me and didn't get to play Saturn games until way after Sega stopped supporting the system. However, in 1996, these were considered cutting edge graphics. So it's nice to see how far we've come in the graphics category. Another game based in 2021 is Nano Breaker, which is a little blah to me, even though it does have a bit of a cult following. In Nano Breaker, you have a weapon that can morph into numerous other weapons. And like Crisis, there is an island backdrop that is supposed to be near the Philippines that deals with the US military trying to create a world and it goes terribly wrong. So there is some story similarities to Crisis, but trust me, the game is nowhere near as fun. As I mentioned, it does have a bit of a cult following, but it seems like it's a cross between Soul Reaver or Devil May Cry in all the wrong ways. So I'd rather play Soul Reaver or Devil May Cry, but for the curious person out there, give it a try, who knows? You might really like it. Now if you're one of those cynical people that think 2021 is going to be worse than 2020, then a zombie outbreak may be your cup of tea. And you don't have to look any further than Dead Rising 3. Or 4. Both were based in 2021. This is a perfect game if you're into zombies but don't want to take yourself too seriously. And if you haven't played any of the Dead Rising games, I seriously suggest you should. This isn't something like Resident Evil or The Last of Us. When someone gets eaten, you kind of laugh. Okay, maybe that scene was a bad example. But let me tell you, you're not going to be scared out of your mind, and you're not going to cry over the storyline. And yes, I did shed a tear over The Last of Us games, and I know you did too. Don't act like you didn't. In contrast, if you're shedding a tear over Dead Rising 3, it's because you're too busy laughing. But what about after 2021? Well, in 2027, we can all get cybernetic artificial organs and become super badasses like Adam Jensen and DOS SX Human Revolution. It was the third in the series of DOS SX games and was pretty awesome to play. I mean, it's considered one of the best PS3 games, Xbox 360 games, and PC games ever. Not to mention the story themes of terrorism, the Illuminati, conspiracies, mega corporations, and a cyberpunk future make it perfect for playing today. The fourth game, Mankind Divided, was pretty good as well, and based in 2029, but I prefer Human Revolution over that one. But a game going 16 years into the future might not be as fun as a game that looks way deeper into the crystal ball. I present to you the arcade classic. Metal Slug! Yeah, did you know Metal Slug was actually based in a real year? 2028 to be exact. You play as Captain Margot Rossi and Lieutenant Tamara Roven of the Falcon Strike Force and are sent to locate and eliminate Donald's power base as well as reclaim and destroy any Metal Slugs they can find so as to keep the technology out of Donald Morden's hands. If you're going to try to play Metal Slug because you've never played it before, try to play the arcade original. And there's enough ways out there that you can do this. Whether you're going to use MAME, some other emulation source, or maybe you have one of those trendy bars that happens to have the arcade cabinet still there. Definitely play this version and not the version that you'd find on PlayStation 1 or Saturn. I personally enjoyed it on the Neo Geo Mini, and that was fun enough for me, but to each its own. We also have Cyberpunk 2077 coming out, which we all know won't be exactly like 2077. At least, we think. 
but I can't wait for this amazing game to finally come out. Who knows, maybe it will be one of those games that are finally remembered like DOS SX, Crisis, or Turtles in Time. Or it could be a total stinker like Beach Wrestler. Only time will tell. What are some of your favorite games based in the future? Put them in the comments. There are a ton out there. And just remember, have a happy new year, stay safe, and make sure to always add a little style to your retro. Have a great day.